Does anybody remember this laptop with all of its dust? Yeah, it's been sitting here since. This is the N4020 Dell laptop that Lexmarx 567 sent me uh, a long time ago. I had a video on repairing the fan in this laptop uh, back in 2017. It's been almost exactly two years. It's been actually one year and 11 months to the day. Uh-oh, we got a problem. And today is the day I'm going to put a hard drive in it and fix it. All right, here it is. I just cleaned that off. There's sticker schmutz and whatever I'm not concerned about. Here it is, and the reason why it's never had an OS on it is because it did not have a hard drive. Well, luckily enough, I have a hard drive, so we can put that in. However, the way it mounts in this laptop, you can see there's holes in this bracket, and that has to attach to the drive to then go in here, and then there are other screws that go in there, in those two holes to hold the hard drive in. I didn't feel comfortable running this machine without the hard drive staying in there because if it fell out you're probably just gonna fuck windows up and it's not gonna be a good thing so I emailed Lexmarks and asked him do you have any laptop hard drive screws? Of all the things I have here I don't have any spare laptop screws. I have a collection of screws for desktop PCs but none of that. So it sat for years, and finally, it dawned on me that maybe I could get them on eBay. We have a package, and this has 100 laptop hard drive screws, and I think it was like $1.50. <laughs> it just never occurred to me. So here we are, we have screws, we have a hard drive, we'll put it in, and we'll run some diagnostics on this, see if the fan still works, and... Uh, make sure the rest of the machine is sound and then we can install the OS. Okay, so here are the screws. They definitely look correct. I'm going to need four of them. Comes in a little dime bag here, so you know, once you use up all the screws, you can save it for other purposes. And those screws look good, so let me close that up so these don't go anywhere. Okay, now I have black on black, so I can't see what I'm doing. And I have the hard drive, and if I'm not mistaken, it's been a while, but this just goes on simply like that, and we attach some screws. I have the finest in shitty screwdrivers handy, but I don't know that it's not magnetized, so that's going to be a problem. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and get out my magnetizing tool, just because. Well, here we are. Magnetize and demagnetize. You can get these for under a dollar on eBay. <clears throat> and in fact, it's so magnetic, there's an LED that somehow is mysteriously attached to it. So we'll do that. So instead of using the wrong tools, we're going to use the right ones. Here it is, screwdriver magnetizer. And we're just going to run the screwdriver through the magnetized portion, back and forth. You can jiggle it up a little bit, but the idea is to get the particles of metal going in the same direction, the poles of it, or I forget, I don't remember all that stuff anymore. But uh, that should be good, so we'll put that there, and now, Oh, it stays for under a dollar. Instead of fucking around, using the wrong tools, being a little bitch. Oops, sorry. For under a dollar, folks. So, there we are. We have that attached. Now I'll get these two screws out of the way. And hopefully that's correct. Uh, well, there's dust in there. That's good. And 
if I'm not mistaken. There, just like that, we got it in. And now, if I'm further not mistaken, the other hard drive screws will screw in here. Yep. We're locked in. Perfect. Okay, this is a different power adapter than I used in the original video of repairing the fan on here. So the system may complain. I don't know. We're going to find out. This has not been turned on in two years. So we'll go ahead and open this up. There we are. And yeah, we have a light that's there. I guess it's attempting to charge the battery. Let's see. We have more lights. Ah, perfect. Now, there is an OS on this drive. Yeah. We'll see if it'll boot it. Just for fun. It probably won't, but, you know, just for fun, we'll give it a shot. There's a lot of glare. It's a bit better. The screen looks pretty good. Can't really complain. There's a little spot there, but that's all right. There's no drivers on this OS. Yeah. Hey, we're looking pretty damn good. I do like that indeed. So let's uh, give this a minute and see what comes up. That's a perfect out-of-box experience. It said it's not activated and all the rest of the good stuff. That's perfectly fine. I don't know if the camera makes out. The, it's like a splotch there and a splotch there. I don't give a crap. It works. That's the main thing. So, anyway, we know it'll boot, so it should install Windows without too much trouble. But, again, we're going to run some diagnostics, so let's get that rolling. Interestingly, there's a disk in there. Let's see what's on that first. Uh, or rather, see if it's bootable. I'm not going to go through all this just to check that, so... We'll just give it the hold the power button down jobber. Power it back on. And F12. Whoop, it popped out for whatever reason. Lights flashing on it. So we'll give that a minute to see itself. Okay, and we'll go down and See if it's bootable. Nope, apparently not. So we'll find out later if I remember what in the hell's on that disc. Let's put in the diagnostics and boot that. I'm making a couple of weird sounds. This disc is probably scratched up, but we'll see if it'll boot it. That spun up. There we go. Beautiful. All right. There's only one processor, so that's it. We'll run through this. That's all good. We'll go back to the motherboard and run the tests on that. It says the clocks are out of sync. Doesn't make a difference, so we'll synchronize them. And we're good. Uh, well, the date is wrong and the time is wrong. Well, no, the time is actually right. So we'll fix that in the BIOS later. Uh, we'll quick hard drive test if we can. We'll test the performance first. Being that it says NA, it probably won't be able to do the smart test, but we'll run through the performance test. Yeah, being that it's showing unknown up there, it's not going to be able to run the smart tests. This drive is good, and I believe the reason it shows no model firmware or serial is because it's set to AHCI mode for the hard drive. Um, maybe if I remember, I'll check that in the BIOS, but let's let this run through.
All right, there we are. Minimum is 37.52 megabytes, maximum 57.27 megabytes, average 49.76. Great. Uh, we'll go to the internal cache test and run that. I'm pretty sure this drive is, for the most part, brand new, except for a little bit of testing here and there. It's only 160 gig, so it's what's available, and it'll work, and it's the right size to fit the laptop. So that's good. Smart test won't run. Let me go in the BIOS and set the date and time and see if I could change the hard drive parameters to have it tested just for shits and grins. Yeah, here it is. See, AHCI. I'm going to set it to ATA to rerun the test, and then I'll switch it back to HCI, which is the best mode for Windows 7, which is what's going to go on here. And I also found that, for some reason, the diagnostics listed the month and the date flipped. Because if I go back up to, where was it here? Month 5, day 3, year 19. That's correct. It also has this odd thing called charger behavior. Enabled or disabled. Disabled says the battery charger is disabled in the system. If AC is connected, the system will still run from the AC adapter and the battery will not be depleted further, but the state of battery charge will not be increased. Why would you have this as a user-selectable option? I've never had to repair one of these where the battery didn't charge because of this thing. Most people are too dumb to even know what a BIOS is, and now it's UEFI, but that goes without saying. Why would you have this as a user-selectable option? Anyway, everything else is all set. I'm going to save changes, reboot into diagnostics, and we'll test the hard drive once again. Back down to hard disks. Internal cat. No, we don't want that. We wanted the smart test. Immediate. And now it works. No errors. Hooray. I'm sure it'll take a while. I, this drive is fine, so we'll call it good. We'll exit that and go to memory and test the cache memory. Benchmark says leave the cache system enabled, which you can't change anyway. And the graph looks somewhat unlike a Pentium 4, which would be basically flatlined all the way until the curve. But there's other bumps here, so that's interesting. Uh, video memory. I think we hit an impasse here. No, it went. Can you hear that? That's the fan running. That fan, surprisingly, was oiled using the right stuff. The red can. That's why right and R start with the same letter. Two years ago. Hasn't been a problem. Hasn't gummed up hasn't jammed up the bearings, hasn't caused any issues, it just worked. And it worked perfectly. And I was incorrect because the memory test of the video memory is continuing and should be done um, really in just another moment, I believe. Oh, we're good. There's four gig of RAM in here. So we'll go and test that, and I'm not going to stand here for that because that's going to take forever. The onboard Dell memory diagnostics, just, I don't know, I gave up after like two hours. It's a very thorough test, so we'll just let this run here, and once that gets started, we'll come back with the completed diagnostics, knowing full well that the system will continue running because the fan is working properly after being oiled with the right stuff. Well, it's got to be a couple hours later, and it's testing, but we have a problem. Apparently, it found a bad place in memory somewhere, and I'm not liking that. Um, I'm thinking that there's two ways I can go about this. The first way is to pull one chip, rerun the memory test, and see what happens, and if that chip is good, 
then I know the other chip is bad and then I can get a replacement for it. If that chip is bad, I'll put the other one in alone and test that. And if that one's good, then we know we're good there. But there is 4 gig of RAM in here, and I'd like to keep it that way. And in the honor of doing things without spending any money, I think I'm just going to go for broke and install Windows anyway. As far as I'm aware, this machine was operational before the fan jammed up which is by the way turned off at the moment it has been running on and off as it needs to perfectly fine but uh, basically this isn't a good sign it's not failing all over the place obviously it's not done yet so we did have a failure at one address right there and maybe if Windows doesn't put anything important there we'll get away with it I don't know so I think we're just going to forge ahead and install Windows and see what the hell happens. I mean, this did come with Windows 7 originally, so it's basically an OEM install. All of the drivers are in uh, on the website. I've downloaded them. They're ready to go. So it's a very easy reinstall. It is showing that both chips failed, but that's because it's testing them as a pair so it can't differentiate between the two at least this diagnostic program can't uh, i can also run the onboard dell diagnostics maybe overnight or something like that and see what that has to say but uh yeah so far not too good okay it's all done it says press enter to continue and it was just the one failure we'll press enter spins up the topa discos and I guess it has to test the other chip now. I don't know. I don't know what the hell it's doing. Oh, actually, it may not have been able to address all 4 gig at the same time. You see that says 3 of 28. Let me uh, wait until that completes and we'll see if the rest have very small amounts that it has to go through as unexpected this has got a lot more testing to do and i've already invested at least three hours of testing on this thing so for whatever reason it just takes damn near forever to test the ram on this system i've seen some that go really fast and others that just don't and this happens to be one of those so i think that's about enough testing we already know we have some bad ram somewhere and Maybe it was just a transient issue, I don't know. One thing I did notice in the BIOS was it did say the battery was charging, and it was at 9%. Let me reboot into the BIOS and see what it reads now. Shows the battery is at 100%. I don't remember this taking a charge of any kind when I last played with it, so let's see. That could be false reading. Oh. I don't know how long the battery will last, but it says the battery health is normal. So I think we're going to leave it at that. This will end this part, and we will continue on installing Windows in the next part. Thank you for watching. Make sure you click like. Make sure you click subscribe. And take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.